everyone, it's Lisa. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be making some cards with the Spellbinders Clear Stamp of the Month and the Small Die of the Month. And these are for July of 2021. They have several clubs and they all release on the first of the month. And these are separate clubs. So the Clear Stamp of the Month is this stamp set, which is this beautiful floral stamp. And then there's also this smaller floral stamp. And you also have several sentiments. There's hello there, happy birthday, wishing you an amazing day, love you, friends make the world beautiful, you are perfectly imperfect. And then you also have this stamp. It's just some journaling lines with another small flower here. So this is the Spellbinders clear stamp of the month for the month of July of 2021. Then there's the Spellbinders Small Die of the Month, which is this particular die. And this die comes with this outer layering piece. You can see the scalloped edge that it has here. And then it also has some other layering dies. And this die is full of detail. So you'll see that when I start die cutting this out and you'll be able to see all of the beautiful detail. So these layer just like this and you have this inside piece and also this sentiment piece that you can use to cut out the word for you. So this says for you in a script font. Now you don't have to use this piece here. If you wanted to, you can stamp one of the sentiments from your stamp set in there, but all of these pieces work together. If you didn't want to use these pieces and you just wanted to use these pieces for a card, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna be making two cards with you today. One is this card where I have the die set on a mini slimline card base and I incorporate the flowers into the card. My next card is using the die set but making the die set its own card. So rather than putting it on an actual card base, the actual die set is the card base, and you'll see how I make that if you stay tuned. I'm also using the flowers in the clear stamp of the month set, and I do some heat embossing and some water coloring. So let's go ahead and get started with card one. So for this card, I take the largest die in the set and I die cut a piece of purple glitter paper. And you can see all these beautiful dots that are around the edges of that die and you're going to need to take one of these brushes and get all of the little um, paper particles out of those dots. You might even use a paper picker and just poke any remaining paper out of that die before you run it through the die cut machine a second time. And this die is pretty large. It actually measures six and a quarter inches by about three and a quarter inch. So next I'm going to take a solid piece of the purple cardstock and I'm going to use this layering die. You can see how intricate this die is. It's so beautiful when it's die cut out. So I'm going to actually layer these dies together. So first I'm going to place the large die down on my um, paper and then I'm going to drop the other die in and then I'm going to take the other layering die and drop that in as well. I want to let you know that if you do use those layering dies without dropping them in the larger die it's just going to put the design in the paper. It's not actually going to cut it out of the cardstock so you have to layer those dies together. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of white cardstock. I'm going to use this as a shim and then I'm just putting it on top and then putting the plate um, for my die cutting machine on top of that and just going to run this through my die cut machine run it through back and forth a few different times because I want to get as much pressure on here because this is such an intricate die I want to make sure that all those little pieces cut out and using that piece of paper as a shim it really helps make sure that all of those pieces do cut out so here's what this looks like when it comes out of the die cut machine you just need to poke or use your brush and just poke out all of the little leftover pieces of cardstock. You may need to use your little poker tool to do that as well. Just make sure all of those little pieces are cut out of that die. But look how beautiful and intricate that is. So when these are layered together, you can see that gorgeous glitter showing through the background. Now, for the top piece, you can use your For You die and you would layer these two pieces together. 
So again, you would just drop in the for you in the outside sentiment piece, and you can actually die cut the word for you to put on there. If you didn't want to use for you, you can just use without and maybe just die cut the dotted piece and um, use a stamp and just stamp a sentiment on the inside if you wanted to do that. So here I'm just weeding out, I went ahead and ran that through my die cut machine, weeding out the extra cardstock and you can see how beautiful that is. So here because I did not put double sided adhesive tape on the back of that cardstock before running it through the die cut machine, I do have to put glue on here and lucky for me I am using a glue that has a very thin tip so I'm able to get in those thin lines. If you don't have a glue with a thin tip to be able to add the glue to the thin lines on your die, you might want to put double sided adhesive tape on the back of your cardstock before you run those dies through your die cutting machine. So same thing with this particular die, I'm just adding glue on the back, just making sure I get, especially where all of the solid pieces are, I'm not too worried about all the pieces with the holes. Um, if you do get it, the glue over top of the holes, you can just use your finger and just kind of rub that through. But the glue I'm using is going to dry clear, so I'm not really worried about it. So I add glue and then I'm going to add it to this glitter piece and just look how beautiful that is. And I want to mention also that this would make an awesome tag. You can actually use that piece, it's so large, to make a gorgeous tag for a gift. So I'm making a card base and I'm making a mini slimline card base. So I have a solid piece of white cardstock that I'm cutting down to seven inches by six and a half inches. And then I'm going to take my scoring tool and I'm going to score this. So I'm putting it in my scoring tool along the seven inch side and I scored at three and a half inches and then I'm just folding and then smoothing down that score. And that gives me my mini slimline card base. Now I do want to mention that this card base is a little bit larger than the mini slimline card bases that I usually make because I usually make a three and a half by six. So this will need a little bit of a larger envelope and it will fit in a number seven envelope which measures three and three quarters by six and three quarters. So I did put some double sided adhesive foam and added that to my card base just to add some dimension. And now here I'm just going to do some coloring with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. I stamped the image out on my Bristol Smooth cardstock using a black archival ink and I'm just coloring it up. I start with the leaves. I am using two greens for the leaves. I have the May green, which is the dark, which I add to the lines on the leaves. Then fluorescent green, which is the light, which I extend a little bit from that dark outward and then I use my Zig blender and just blend that out. And then for the actual flower for the center I'm going to come in with brown for the center to make that center a little bit darker. And I'm going to do that for all three flowers. And for this card I'm not actually doing using water but in my next card I will be using my Zigs with water. So for this particular stamp with this card I'm using my Zigs with the blender to blend it out and then the next card will be with the water. So I'm bringing in orange as my dark and I'm just coloring over a lot of the lines which are the detail lines on that flower. And I love stamps that actually have the detail lines because it's easy to see where the shadows go which would always be your darkest color. And then I'm just going over that a little bit with the bright yellow and then I will also go over that with the yellow and then just blend those colors out. While you watch me finish up the coloring, I do want to talk a little bit about the Spellbinders clubs, and they have several clubs. So as I mentioned earlier, the only ones that I'm showing you here are the Small Die of the Month, as well as the Clear Stamp of the Month. So the Clear Stamp of the Month is $10 a month, and the Small Die of the Month is $15 a month. They also have a Large Die of the Month, that's $27.50. They have a Glimmer of the Month, that's $22.50. They have an APG Die of the Month, that's $32.50 and they also have a card kit of the month which is $38.50. They also have some other value clubs where you can combine the dies with the stamps so on and so forth and I will link to all of the club information down in the description box so if you're interested in these um, clubs please take a look down in the description box hop on over using the links that I provide and you'll be taken to the um, Spellbinders website we'll be able to see more information on those clubs.
Now next month in August, I will be featuring the Spellbinders card kit of the month on my channel and I'll be making several cards with the card kit. I don't have it for July. The only ones I have for July are the clear stamp and the small die of the month. All of the kits release on the first of the month and you can join the club anytime between the first of the month through the blackout window. They do have a blackout window and for July, their blackout window will be July 24th. So you can join July's clubs, any of their clubs between July 1st and July 24th. You cannot skip your um, subscriptions, but you can cancel anytime. So once again, I will link their clubs down below and there's also a frequently asked questions section on their website and I'll link that down below too because that might answer any additional questions that you might have. So here I'm just going to fussy cut out my flower and I'm going to add some glue and I'm going to add this to my card. And I chose to use orange because I thought the orange and the purple complement each other very well. So you can see how that floral stamp it actually sits nicely in the bottom corner of the card and you can use this on an A2 size card as well. So here I'm just adding some silver gem stickers to my card. I thought these silver gems would just add some more sparkle to the front of this card. And that completes card one. So moving on to card two, I'm actually going to do something very similar, only I am going to be doing some heat embossing. I am gonna be doing some watercoloring and I'm actually gonna make the die the actual card base. So you'll wanna stay tuned to see how I do that. So I'm taking the large stamp and I stamp it out onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock and I did use the Versamark ink. And then I'm gonna bring in some very fine gold embossing powder just sprinkle that on to the cardstock and using the gold embossing powder it just gives this floral image just a beautiful beautiful look so then I'm going to use my heat tool and just melt that embossing powder and when you're using water to watercolor I do like to use the heat embossing just because it provides a wall so that any of that watercolor it's kind of contained within that wall or within that those stamped lines so you can see that that's melting that embossing powder and the sparkle that that gives is just beautiful so I'm only using a few colors here. I'm using the same Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and I actually take my cobalt blue, which is the only blue color that I use, and I just kind of put that blue on some of those um, fine lines, the gold lines that are on that stamp, and then I just use my water brush to extend that blue out. I wanted kind of not such a deep color like the other stamp had, but when you use water, it is kind of more of a muted look. So it's a softer tone. It's not as deep and dark. So that's why I chose to use the water because that's the look I was going for. So again, just applying the blue to those shadow marks and then just using the water pen. This is an Arteza water brush pen. There's water in the barrel and you can just squeeze the barrel to let the water come through. And then for the green, I used a light green. And for the center, of those flowers I used light carmine and when you use the water brush you want to also make sure that you clean it on a paper towel before you move from one color to the next. So this is the Spellbinders gold foil paper and what I love about this paper is it's gold foil on both sides. Usually when I buy foil paper it's only foiled on one side and this one is on both sides. So here I'm just gonna run this through my die cut machine using the largest die in the set. I'm just gonna run it back a few times because this paper is a little bit thicker and I wanna make sure all those dots poke out. So for this particular card, I'm not using all of the layering dies. I'm just using the largest die and then the next largest die that layers right within that. I'm not using the for you or the top layering die. And when you die cut that, I wanna just show you that it actually gives you this solid panel you see all the white on the um, inside where you can actually stamp a sentiment. So if I were to use the other layering piece, all of that white would be cut out into an intricate design as you saw with the previous card. So here I'm just gonna glue this onto the foil paper. So just applying some glue to the back side. And then when you add this to the foil paper, just make sure that the holes are lined up. And then I'm gonna fussy cut out my floral image. 
and I want to use a stamp sentiment from the stamp set. So I'm just putting this here in my Misty and I'm just lining up the flowers where I know that I'm going to want to put them just so that I can see where I want to stamp my sentiment. And the sentiment I'm using is wishing you an amazing day. So I'm just lining that up, making sure that it is straight and then I remove the flowers. I do add some powder there to the cardstock and then I use my Versamark ink, ink up the stamp and then stamp that down. And then I'm going to use my gold embossing powder and sprinkle that on and then just tap off the excess and I'm just brushing away any particles that may have still appeared on that cardstock and then I will heat set that with my heat tool. So I probably should have done the heat embossing before adding this white layer to the gold foil cardstock because it actually welted the cardstock on the back of that layer. So what I did is I just die cut that large layer again with some white cardstock and I'm just going to add it to give this a more clean look on the back. And then I'm going to add the flower, just adding some glue and adding that to the front. And I'm going to use my gold epoxy dots. These are Spellbinders gold epoxy dots and just add a few of them to the front. Now I was going to use this as a tag and if you wanted to use it as a tag you can just punch a hole through the top and add a ribbon. But then I decided that I would get much more use out of this particular um, project if I made it into a card. So I decided to turn this into an actual card by creating a card base. So I took a piece of eight and a half by 11 sheet of white cardstock, folded it in half, and then I took the die and placed it slightly above the fold in that cardstock. Just use some washi tape to hold that down to my cardstock, and then I'll run that through the die cut machine. And when that comes out of the die cut machine, I'm just going to remove all of the paper that I don't need around the edges. It does put some of the dots in the top layer. The bottom layer, it just has some dots, um, but they're not actually cut out because the paper was so thick. So it just provides a nice design on the bottom layer. So you can see here, I'm just adding that layer that I decorated right to the top of the card base, just with some liquid glue. And now this is a card and it stands up if you wanted it to. And I don't know if you saw those dots on the inside, but it's just a nice design on the inside. So that completes this card and if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and again be sure to subscribe for more card making tutorials. Have a great day everyone and thanks for watching. Bye bye.